A 13-year-old girl got into this cab driver's cab, and it changed the course of her life forever. When it comes to our own safety, most of us like to think we can trust our gut feelings and get ourselves out of trouble. When it comes to helping strangers, though, this isn't always the easiest thing to do. We're often afraid of making mistakes and then suffering the consequences of false assumptions. For one brave taxi driver, however, sticking to his instincts made him an instant hero. Who would have thought that a regular day could turn a humble cabbie into a savior? Listen on to learn how this man rescued a teenage girl from a horrific situation she was unwittingly being drawn into by a merciless predator. The extra caring among you may even wish to take notes as you never know when you'll encounter something similar in the future and have the opportunity to be a hero, too. In the midst of his regular work routine, taxi driver Satbir Aurora drove around on a Tuesday afternoon looking for passengers. He threaded through the neighborhood in the county of Oxfordshire, hoping to get a client for a ride. Little did he know that the unexpected traveler he was about to pick up would change his life forever. When he saw a young girl standing by the road signaling for him to stop, Aurora did so. He was clueless to the fact that a series of challenging and dangerous events awaited both of them. Unaware of any red flags, he opened the door and the girl hopped in, marking the commencement of one remarkably fateful ride. Aurora did not hesitate when he drove up to the young girl's location. Judging from her looks, she appeared to be around 13 years old, dressed in a conservative school uniform. When she entered the taxi, she politely asked Aurora to take her to the Gloucestershire Railway Station. Aurora was surprised by the unlikely request. He noticed the young girl seemed to have a look of worry on her face. The cabbie couldn't understand precisely what was going on, but he knew something was not right. Would he talk to the girl about his observation? The Gloucestershire Railway Station was more than an hour from the town of Oxfordshire, where he picked up the young girl. Referencing his knowledge of the distance between the two locations against her strange behavior, Aurora felt uneasy. Yet at the time, he couldn't figure out why. He knew that his passenger's choice of drop-off point was completely none of his business. But for this teenage girl, he felt like something wasn't right. The very fact that she had to travel in a taxi to a train station that was over an hour from her house had him worried. Aurora's instincts at the time were telling him that her parents were probably unaware of what was going on. If they knew she was going so far, he felt she must have lied to them when explaining why. Multiple theories were racing through Aurora's mind, and he noticed that the young girl seemed pretty worried, too. To break the tension, he tried to start a conversation, engaging her in some sort of small talk. He started by asking the young girl why she was heading so far from their home. Would the girl trust him enough to open up? For Aurora, engaging in small talk with his passengers was a normal thing, especially for long rides. But with this young girl, he didn't know what to expect, as she seemed to be anxious from the very start. Then the girl said nothing. She just kept her silence in the back of the taxi. But Aurora was persistent. He kept asking her details about the trip to help him understand her situation. He specifically asked where she was headed when she got to Gloucestershire Station. Pressed by the cab driver's friendly but insistent interrogation, the schoolgirl finally gave in and answered him. But a response only heightened the tension and made Aurora more suspicious of her and the entire situation. While she did speak, the young girl refused to reveal much information. The 13-year-old last simply told him that she was heading somewhere with a friend. She didn't drop a name nor any details. So, her vague response prompted the suspicious driver to ask more questions. Do your parents know about this? When asked if her parents knew about her trip, she gave a defensive answer by insisting that they were aware she was meeting a friend. Aurora nodded but remained convinced that she was lying. He could tell from her face and the way she answered that she was hiding a secret. The girl became increasingly defensive as he continued to question her. However, he didn't stop asking until he got the answers he wanted. What information did the cab driver see as being vital to ensure her safety? Why was he keen on finding out who she was going to meet 
and where they were heading. Aurora was aware that he had no right to ask for personal information from this passenger, but this, he felt, was a unique situation. His instincts were telling him that something was very wrong and he had to break boundaries. He just couldn't determine why, nor precisely where, this weird vibe was coming from. When she said her parents knew about the trip, he knew it was a lie. He then had a bad feeling when the girl stopped giving information. He felt that maybe he had crossed the line and the kid might fear him, despite his good intentions. As they were nearing the Gloucestershire Railway Station, Aurora felt more uncomfortable and worried. He was hesitant to let the kid out of the safety of his cab as he feared what might happen. He was getting frustrated and didn't know what else to do. When they finally arrived at the station, the young girl appeared to be looking for someone. Who are you looking for? Aurora asked. After giving a simple response that she was looking for, a friend, she quickly grabbed her backpack and left the cab. When the girl exited the taxi, Aurora did not feel right about leaving the station. He was determined to stay at least until her friend arrived. As he was observing the young girl, she appeared to become more upset. This behavior only cemented his decision to stay. Aurora didn't feel at ease leaving the teenage girl, so he stayed and continued to observe the situation. Not knowing what to do, he called his wife to get some advice. He explained the predicament he was in and hoped she would be able to help him figure out what to do next. Since Aurora and his wife operate their taxi service together, he called her. He felt the need to talk to her about the youngster's suspicious behavior and hoped she could offer some advice on how to help this young kid. While he was talking to his wife on the phone about what happened, Aurora kept an eye on the girl. He wanted to make sure he'd be able to monitor her and ensure her safety. Aurora's wife was equally concerned. What was it about this kid that was so unsettling? After hearing about the situation, Aurora's wife became worried too. As a woman, she thought that the young girl might be more comfortable speaking to her. With her motherly instincts kicking into overdrive and her husband agreeing that it was the best thing to do, she decided to attempt talking to the young girl. They believed that speaking with a woman might make the 13-year-old feel a bit more at ease in opening up. Aurora then rolled down his window and called out to the girl. Will she trust him enough to come over? And then again to talk to his wife? The girl had been waiting anxiously, but several minutes had already passed with no one showing up to meet her. Aurora called her and asked her to speak with his wife over the phone. She refused at first, but after some convincing words from Aurora, the girl eventually agreed. The lost little soul took the phone from the cab driver's hand. Will his wife convince her to open up about who she's meeting and where they are heading? Will the couple save her from a potentially deadly situation? Hello, the girl said, putting the phone to her ear. Although she was hesitant, she still agreed to talk to the cab driver's wife. He watched on as the conversation unfolding, his wife asking a lot of the same questions he had been trying to get answers to just moments earlier. Do your parents really know where you're going? Aurora's wife asked. The girl did not answer the question immediately, but the truth was hovering somewhere in the back of her mind, waiting for her to work up the courage to let it out. Could this kid be in big trouble? How will the couple help her? Although she was worried, Aurora's wife did not let the girl feel that they were anxious about the situation. She continued with her questions and even called the girl out, gently, of course, for not calling the truth. As it turns out, this motherly accusation was precisely what the girl needed to hear to finally admit the truth. The schoolgirl, although nervous, revealed that she hadn't told her parents about her trip. She also told Aurora's wife that she was anxious about the situation she was getting herself into. Because she was a minor, the couple did not think twice about immediately seeking help from the police. Aurora called the authorities right away, requesting immediate assistance. While they waited for the police officers to arrive, he talked to the girl again. He asked her who in particular she was meeting at the station, hoping she'd give a detailed answer. This time, the young girl felt a tad more at ease with a taxi driver. She felt the urge to be truthful and said she was meeting a friend whom she had become acquainted with on the internet. Her answer verified Aurora's gut feeling that something bad was in the works. 
Upon learning of the girl's online friend, Aurora knew he had to stay and protect her from the terrible situation she was at risk of being swept up in. Considering she was underage and alone, he knew he had to help her. Meanwhile, the phantom from the internet was about to make his entrance. A 24-year-old guy named Sam Hewings was, at that very moment, zeroing in on the Gloucestershire station. With a backpack clutched tightly in one hand, he scanned the crowd looking for someone in particular. A young girl he was supposed to be meeting. Could he be the online friend the girl was waiting for? Hewings was on the lookout for a girl he was supposed to be meeting up with, when he noticed two police cars waiting at the station. The sight of the authorities caused him such anxiety and fear that he decided to leave the area as quickly as possible, doing his best to avoid being noticed. Hardly the actions of an innocent man. Why was Hewing so concerned about the presence of police at the station? Could he be guilty of something? Had he committed some criminal act? Or was his concern to do with the girl he was hoping to meet there? Meanwhile, our friendly cab driver wasn't done with his strategizing. Aurora asked the girl if he could borrow her phone and call the number of the friend she was meeting at the station. While she was taken aback by the request, the girl reluctantly agreed to hand over her phone. With a look of panic forming on her face, the girl held back. However, the kindness she felt emanating from Aurora won her over. So, after just a moment's hesitation, she handed over the phone. Did Aurora have a plan that could lead to the capture of this man? As Hewings was about to leave the station, his phone rang. With his stressed mind running on pure instinct, he didn't even consider the possible consequences of his actions before answering it. However, the realization struck him the moment the call connected, and so he hung up without uttering a word to the person on the other line. Although there was no conversation engaged in, the caller did not bother to try again. While this sounds weird, everything will soon make sense. Keep listening as we uncover the dark truth about Hewing, a truth that might never have come to light had the fateful phone call not been made. What Hewings did not realize was that his actions were all being recorded on the security camera just outside the station. Crucially, this meant he was captured answering the phone call, a piece of evidence that would prove to be a great help to the authorities in revealing the predator's dark side. The police were able to trace his phone number via the local tower the call had connected through. From this simple starting point, they had no idea how dark their investigation was about to get. Just who is this Sam Hewings, and why is it so vital that he be caught? Having identified Sam Hewings as the caller, the investigating officers found themselves on a path of discovery filled with increasingly unsettling facts. Hewings, it turns out, had booked train tickets for himself and a child, a ride that would take the two of them back with him to his house. It was in Hewings' online chat logs, however, that the most horrific evidence emerged, details of exactly what he had planned to do with a young girl. It's hard to fathom how twisted this man's ideas were, and worse, how prepared he was to carry them out. Keep listening to learn more about his plans for the innocent kid. The online chat logs were eventually presented to Gloucestershire Crown Court. When the authorities studied this evidence, in particular certain posts made on forums no innocent people would ever subscribe to, it became clear that they were dealing with a pedophile. The young girl, it seems, was being lured into a trap she might never have been able to escape from on her own. Are you ready to learn more? Brace yourselves, because the truth will have you rethinking every interaction you have had with strangers online. Aside from verifying that Hewings was a pedophile, further online chat history records exposed his participation in various dark groups. In these forums, Hewings spoke of his plans to kidnap, sedate, and rape a victim, horrific acts that represented only a portion of the darkness that lurked within him. As the truth behind Hewings' identity was uncovered layer by layer, more and more terrible things were unearthed. His wild ideas led him to conceptualize a horrific plan that would put his intended victim's life at risk. The police did not waste time in getting the paperwork in order to raid Hewing's home. When they accessed his house, they found a backpack, the same one he had carried to Gloucestershire Railway Station that day. Upon opening the bag, 
Hewing's dark secret was finally brought to light. In the backpack, police found two sharp knives, a glasses case stuffed with cocodamol, a strong sedative, and a roll of duct tape. Only a criminal with an evil plan in mind would have need of such dangerous goods. Not long after this chilling discovery, Hewing stood in court, awaiting his verdict. Following his arrest, the police presented Hewings to Gloucestershire Crown Court. From about September to November last year, your chat logs reveal your pedophile tendencies and desires, said Judge Michael Cullum. You said, I have a teen in mind, but she needs to be kidnapped, the judge added. While Hewings hadn't had the opportunity to follow through on his plans, the evidence of his intentions was strong enough for him to receive a conviction. It was clear that he was set on abducting the girl and the contents of his bag, combined with the contents of his chat logs, provided solid evidence of what he planned to do next. The judge said it was clear to him that Sam Hewings had planned to abduct the teenage girl. Hewings had persuaded her that she would be safe with him, and this was why he was able to lure her into traveling all the way to Gloucestershire. If not for the kind heart and heroic act of Satbir Aurora, the taxi driver, the young girl would have been abducted, suffering unthinkable things in the hands of a twisted pedophile. Thanks to Aurora's persistence and strength of character, however, the girl was brought back from the edge of the abyss. A night before the near abduction, the 13-year-old had booked a cab in the wee hours of the morning. It was fortunate then that Satbir Aurora was the one to arrive first. He later reported that he sensed something was wrong right from the start of his encounter with the girl. Aurora revealed that he had undergone safeguarding training several months before the incident happened. The activity was designed to help him identify when someone's behavior suggests that they secretly need help. His instincts and training certainly paid off as he was, just months later, able to save a girl from a frightful fate. It's amazing that Aurora took the initiative to educate himself in this way. The training was really useful. Because of the cases we read about on the safeguarding course, I was able to recognize the signs and quickly spot that it was a grooming case, Aurora said in an interview. His strength, courage, and ability to act on his gut feelings made him an officially recognized hero. Satbir Aurora was granted the highest honor by the Gloucestershire police, and he couldn't be more grateful. Beyond the recognition, he's glad that the girl is now safe and sound. Detective Constable Ian Bennett commended the cabbie for his heroic act. I cannot praise the taxi driver enough for his actions in this case. He undoubtedly saved harm from coming to the girl and provided vital evidence for the prosecution. Bennett also emphasized the relevance of safeguarding training for cab drivers, as they sadly often find themselves in the crossfire of criminal acts. We can only hope that all cabbies, not just in England but across the globe, will be given access to this useful training.